Uh, the other thing I wanted to look at is this Astor thing. Uh, before I either part it out, pull the tubes off it and throw it away, or put it into storage. And slide some power lead to it, and we'll see what it does. But this had a phonogram attached to it as well, so that's probably a selector. UAM radio is very hard to pick up around here. Okay, well, for some inexplicable reason, I've still got a turntable and a collection of records in the cupboard. Not that I've ever listened to them, I think they were my dad's. And this thing here obviously needs a belt that's sitting up there looking rather hard and perished. If I can find a belt for it, that'd probably be the right test signal for the uh, tube amp low enough anyway, I can't just plug it into a computer or I'll probably blow the thing up. Well that's interesting. It doesn't have an Australian plug on it. I think this one's designed to go into the back of an amplifier which I don't have. So it might be 240 volts or it might not be. I think some of these used 100 volts for running these. Uh, yeah. I might play with this one later. Right, now that she's warmed up and got some good oil in her, it's actually the compression's pretty good. We're just over 120 on cylinders 3 to 4, but number 1's still a bit low, it's about 90 pounds. I don't think it's quite enough to cause the misfiring and sputtering that I'm getting though. I think that's ignition. The poor old distributor's way off the chart here. I had to put a washer to stop it from floating away. Uh, in theory it should only be a couple of marks past the uh, centre of that tab. So I might do the condenser, which may cause it to fire way off. Might look at the coil. It's getting a little bit warm there. But, yeah, everything's a bit tired. The leads are rubbed in places. The cap's a bit ragged. Oh, no, the cap's okay. It's had a cap recently, and the rotor button is acceptable. Just a matter of cleaning it up, and I'll do the points gap. points gap condenser and coil and it might make a bit of a difference. Yeah, even with the worst cylinder disconnected it's still running like a bag of shit. 
and the spark's a bit erratic in size and intensity. So yeah, definitely got to work on this ignition. I'll find out what it means like when the distributor has to be rotated so far off its normal marks as well. Maybe something's messed up inside. Well, the tidy up's working pretty good so far. Starting to look a bit better. Got to get the Westinghouse back together now that most of the parts are cleaned up. Just waiting on insulation for it. While I was hunting around, I found my collection of old butcher's saws and a boning knife. I gave most of it away. I had some chain mail, gloves and other various bits and pieces, but i still got some of this old gear. I mean, it's really old. These would make good wood saws, though. That's pretty much what my mate gave them to me for. That one's still sharp. That one's blunt. But I've been using that one as a wood saw for yonks. And that one's blunt, too. I don't know who made them, but they're definitely good quality steel. They could be resharpened really easy enough. As I'll compliment the meat cutting bandsaw over there. <laughs> if the bandsaw goes, I'll include these with it. And even the mutilated bottle cooler is getting a good workout today. Starting to freeze up. A bit of heat rejection there. Yeah, it's working really well. <laughs> These things are the best way to understand the refrigeration cycle, just in a nutshell. There's not much more to it. It's really just a compressor. High pressure discharge coming off it, condensing into liquid via sand cooling, coming out through the filter dryer, through the capillary tube, and then getting metered through here into the evaporator tube, where it returns to the compressor on the suction side really straightforward. But getting the right balance of evaporator and condenser size and the right compressor for a system is sort of an art that the refrigeration mechanics or engineers only really know. But no, it's working just nice. I want to turn this into a transformer cooler but it's just one of those one day projects. <laughs> Eventually. A pile of stuff to blow up getting bigger. Well actually the rectifier stuff for the um, washing machine of death, but I've got some little motors and things here to blow up or fry. And these fans. These are 115 volts AC. I'm going to try and run them on 240. See what they do. 